endoscopic tunnel structurotomy in the treatment of stenosis after sleeve gastrectomy. A 22-year-old woman with a history of sleeve gastrectomy in December 2017 who presented with dysphagia to solid food. Food regurgitation occurred either immediately or half an hour after eating. Previous upper endoscopy revealed a stenosis at the level of incisura angularis. We performed a lacalasia by lunda lation. Unfortunately, the patient did not respond. The acalasia balloon was too long for her 80 cm sleeve. Then, the patient had an upper GI series test, and the arrow showed the level of the stenosis. Now, in this animation, we describe a new technique called endoscopic tunnel structurotomy. The first step is to diagnose the structure. After the diagnose, a submucosal injection is performed before the incision of the submucosal tunnel. The submucosal tunneling is performed using a knife and the endocut mode. It is important to inject more saline during the procedure to make it easier with a lower risk of perforation. After the submucosal tunnel, we perform the structurotomy, cutting the residual scar tissue and the involved muscular fibers. After the structurotomy, you cannot see the structure anymore, allowing the passage of food and fluids. The last step is closer the defect. In this case, we use an endoscopic suturing device. We perform a running full thickness suture pattern. In this running pattern, we start the suture from the distal part of the defect and then we alternate stitches from proximal and distal parts of the defect. You may also consider use hemostatic clips to close the defect. However, we prefer suturing for stomach closure. After the last stint, needle is then released and served as a tissue anchor. Gentle tension was applied to the suture to oppose the margins of the defect. To finish the procedure, the suture was then secured and cut using the synth device. Now we show the video of our patient. So, the first step is to identify the stenosis. During the EGD, we can see a gastric sleeve and we can quickly diagnose a stricture at the level of the incisura angularis. In this picture, you can see the structure clearly. The second step is the submucosal injection. We check the stenosis and do the injection 5 cm proximal it. We use an injector needle and inject 4 ml of saline with a very light solution of methylene blue without epinephrine. Then, the third step is the endoscopic tunnel structurotomy. Here, we can easily identify the stenotic ring and we started the incision 5 cm below it. We use a dual J knife using the endocut mode. After the incision, we began to perform the tunnel until we reach the stenosis. It's important to inject more saline to make the procedure easier with a lower risk of perforation. Our electrosurgical settings for the submucosal tunneling were endocut Q222 and swift coagulation, 40 watts effect 2. Hemostasis was done with soft coagulation, 80 watts effect 4. During the submucosal tunneling, it is easy to identify some dense fibrosis, as you see in the video. During the tunneling procedure, we come back to the lumen to make sure we were in the right direction. After tunneling through the fibrotic submucosal tissue, improving the stenotic area can be seen. After checking the direction, we come back to the submucosal tunnel and identify the muscularis fibers in the stenotic area. We use a junior long SB knife, which is a rotatable device. We prefer to use a scissor type knife when teaching fellows, as you can confirm placement and amount of tissue grasper before cutting. 
However, any type of knife could be used without adding extra cost to the procedure. The goal of the method is to cut all the muscular fibers, so you grab the muscular fiber and cut it. Then, the procedure continues until the dissection of all muscle fibers, as we can see in the video. It is essential to make sure that no muscularis fibers are remaining. At this point, we are cutting the last fiber, as you can see. We performed a circular layer myotomy and not a full thickness. After the complete dissection, we go to the last step, which is closure the wall defect created for the tunneling. We use the overseas device to close the gastric excess. The device consists of a curved suturing arm and an anchor exchange. This is used to pass the needle back and forth to the tissue. We started to close the defect in the distal margin, advancing the needle from the outside of the defect to the inside margin of the defect. This allows us to perform a running suturing from left to right. After the last stitch, we released the needle, which served as a tissue anchor. Gentle tension was applied to the suture to oppose the margins of the defect. Then, the suture was secured and cut using the cinch device. This picture shows the final aspect of the closure. After the structurotomy and closure the defect, we reevaluated the sleeve. Now, we can observe an improvement of the stenotic area, as you see in this picture. After the procedure, the patient did not have any complaint. In three months follow-up, the patient reported significant improvement of symptoms. We performed a post-upper GI series test and observed the resolution of the stenosis when comparing with the pre baryon swallow. So, we conclude that Endoscopic tunnel structurotomy appears to be technically feasible and safe in the treatment of sleeve gastrectomy stenosis. The procedure may be an option after a calasia balloon dilation failure. More studies are necessary to prove its efficacy.